Season 6 is here and so is Alari, so here's one mistake you'll want to avoid for every hero. A lot of Alaris are putting their turret in open space, allowing for the enemy to take it down quickly. Instead, put the turret behind cover in areas where your teammates are likely to retreat to, or to areas that are about to be reclaimed to brawl within its radius. A lot of people pick D.Va just to play her for no reason. In reality, D.Va does a very good job of countering tanks that try to dive your backline aggressively like Winston, Wrecking Ball, and Doomfist. Avoid slam punching without block as Doomfist. You are asking to die if you go in without cooldowns, especially when the enemy plays to counter you specifically once they realize you are popping off. As Junker Queen, you want to make sure that you aren't spending a lot of time sitting around during the fight. You prefer a very fast tempo, and if you don't play to it, you are better off on characters like Reinhardt and Ramatra. Orisa excels at taking aggression from enemies due to her health pool full of armor. Because of this, you want to make sure you are constantly pressuring the enemy to force them to you and use your gold for things you actually need to use it for, like Bastion unloading bullets on you or Hanzo with scatter arrow. You are not invincible when your annihilation is active as Ramatra. Dying with this ultimate will lose you games, so make sure that your team is ready to push in with you and that your health pool is up as well. Also, try to bait out sleep darts before you go in. This has been a life-threatening mistake for years now, but people still do it. Please stop using Fire Strike against Reinhardt's when they have Shatter. You are asking to get MTD. Make sure that you don't waste your breather when you already have your ultimate on Roadhog. If your supports don't have their ultimates yet, this is a great opportunity to build them and swing fights when you're at a disadvantage. Avoid using your hands into an enemy's Sigma when you know that he has Rock. Most of the time, when when you are playing Sigma, you are going to be playing against another, so this mistake is pretty important to avoid. A lot of players tend to invest everything into their first jump as Winston. When playing him within a dive composition, don't be afraid to soft dive a location to pressure the enemy while building your support's ultimates and giving your DPS time to set up. This will allow you to take more advantageous engagements later on in the fight instead of dying early. As Wrecking Ball, make sure you aren't slamming into every team. Sometimes all you need to do is displace the enemy to give your team time to surround them. Slamming into a May Cassidy is going to be a death trap for you, while slamming into a BAP or a Zen alone is much more advantageous. Use your main bubble to build charge and friendly bubbles to keep teammates alive, and make sure that you do not waste them early, especially against characters that can destroy your team quick, like Roadhog, Junkrat, and Tracer when she has her sticky bomb. Ash is pretty straightforward, but make sure that you are holding on to your Bob when Ana has Sleep Dart or Sombra is lurking as they can deactivate him easily. On top of this, try to keep your coach gun online against characters that can jump on you so that you have an escape route out. Don't use your sentry turret without support from your team on Bastion. Understand that once this cooldown is down, you are a useless character, so you want to make sure that your team is ready to support you when the time is right. As Cassidy, make sure that you aren't wasting your Hindernade on characters you don't need to use it on. Instead, use it when you know you can hit the shot and secure the kill. Sticking a Kiri so she can't TP out is much more beneficial than trying to cross map a Tracer with three blinks and a recall. This mistake is very niche, but if you see your honest sleep dart at target as Echo, do not directly stick the target with your stickies. Instead, put them on the ground next to the target so you can build higher burst damage potential and secure the kill. Don't int every single time you have Dragon Blade as Genji. Sometimes it is more beneficial to secure a single pick and force support ultimates out than it is to go for a few extra likely to die for it. Don't throw around your storm arrows when playing Hanzo, especially against dive tanks. Instead, use it to punish tanks that are being overly aggressive like after Winston jumps in or Wrecking Ball slams. You still can use the ability aggressively, but don't miss out on free value when it is given to you. Spamming one angle the whole game as Junkrat is going to get you nowhere. Instead, use your minds on off angles to create deadly combos and find consistent picks. A lot of players tend to not think about where they want to place their wall as May before the fight, causing them to miss out on a lot of opportunities. Think about common choke points you will want to cut people off with your wall and set yourself up before the fight starts for efficiency. Don't forget to be creative with the wall as well. Never assume you are safe as Farah. Even if you have a mercy, you want to stay in the air as much as possible, so still prioritize playing around cover where you can boost your uptime. It is important to have patience as Reaper. I see way too many players attempting to wraith in an ultimate. This makes it really easy to prepare and annihilate you before you can even get an ounce of value. Take the fight tactically and take out abilities that will counter you first like sleep and defense matrix before going for the execute. As sojourn, constantly look for targets to passively build your charge like Brigitte and tanks and then shift your focus to other characters. The more time you waste on harder to hit targets, the more likely you are to get less value. Stop wasting your visor when the enemy has a shield in your face as soldier 76. On top of this, avoid playing too stacked with your team as soldier. His identity comes from taking strong off angles mid fight to punish his enemies. Sombra doesn't always have to play for the hack, especially in ladder. Sometimes it is more beneficial to shoot for a damage playstyle and build your ultimate as fast as possible, especially when you don't have a dive core to follow up on your hack's targets. If you don't plan on setting up a turret bomb or mid-fight rotation with your teleporter, try to set it up to get dead teammates back faster in the case that the fight prolongs. Torbjorn's turret isn't there to just do damage to enemies. It is there to punish flankers on off angles 
as well as to keep them off of your supports. Obviously, if there are no flankers to worry about, this doesn't apply, but be mindful of where your supports are playing and think about how to set them up for greatness. Tracer's Pulse Bomb is a very deep ability. Make sure that you don't use it whenever you have it. Instead, assess where your team is and see if they could clean up kills even if the ability gets suzued. A lot of the time, I see the most insane sticks of all time, but it doesn't mean anything because the enemy had an answer. Slow down, take a breath, and think you'll get more value that way. Against dive cores, you want to make sure that you always have your grappling hook online as Widowmaker so you can escape without losing your power position. Get jumped, run, and then reclaim your spot when it is safe to do so. To start off the supports as Ana, stop using your anti-grenade defensively all of the time. The biotic nade should be used aggressively 90% of the time to deal anti-nade effects that your team can follow up upon. In Overwatch 1, it wasn't that big of a deal, but now your shift on Baptiste is really important. Make sure you use it when your teammate is below half HP to instantly burst 100 HP instead of 50. Treat the ability as a mini immortality field and thank me later. You don't always have to play scared as Brigitte. Sometimes the composition calls for aggression to keep your support alive. Also, stop packing your tanks. That is your other support's job to heal. Stop using your teleport to catch up with your team on Kiriko. Instead, think about where the fight is going to end up and rotate in effectively so that you can use the ability to keep yourself out of harm's way. Life Weaver is terrible. Well, that was weird. As Life Weaver, make sure that you pull when someone actually needs to get out. If they are critical, that doesn't necessarily mean they need to get out if they are about to finish a kill either. This is the hardest part of Life Weaver's kit, but once you get it, you'll definitely see results. Lucio's healing is minimal, so sometimes it is better to speed boost a teammate out of harm's way instead of trying to heal them through the damage. This is difficult to master, but an important mistake many players are making to this day. Stop pocketing one player the whole game as mercy. Think about each character and when they are activated. For example, rotate damage damage boost off of characters like Ash and Soldier when your Hog hits a hook, your Ana hits a sleep dart, or your Tracer is about to hit a nasty flank. Only throw your damage orb as Moira during a fight when you know you can secure the pick. Most of the time, using your orb to heal and not wasting your resources is the play in the mid-fight. Lastly, as Zenyatta, don't play scared in every composition. Sometimes in spam, it is the play, but oftentimes, if you play hard off of your team's aggression, you can absolutely carry games as a result. I hope you are all enjoying the new season as much as me, but until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.